Hello y'all and welcome to another video. I'm happy to be back after a long YouTube break and I'm going to be kicking today off with a hot topic question which is how do you tell if someone is a false prophet? So I get a lot of comments because I'm calling William Branham a false prophet and a cult leader and all those things and obviously, if you believe in William Branham, <laughs> you will get upset about that. <laughs> and so I wanted to do a video talking about how you can tell that somebody is a false prophet. So how do you tell if somebody is a false prophet? Do you go by <laughs> your instincts? No. Do you go by how you feel? No. Do you go by your personal convictions? No. Do you go by what somebody else is telling you? No. Again, no. Charity, are you telling me that I can't trust my gut? Yes. I'm telling you, you can't trust your gut. <laughs> the Bible says that our heart is deceitful above all things. Um, sometimes we get led astray by our own desires, hopes, wants, and even if those desires can seem good, like if you are inclined to believe a certain direction and a leader uh, a leader points towards that direction, it doesn't mean that he is telling the truth because of your own personal convictions. If he seems like a nice guy and he's very charismatic and he makes you feel good when you're around him or you, you feel like spiritual, you feel the anointing, like all of those things, no. If we can't trust those things, what can we trust? We can trust the Word of God. That's where our standard of truth should be. And regardless of how we feel, how people around us feel, we should be looking at the Word of God. I'd like to preface this by saying some of the points I make are might statements. They're possibly statements. And this is to show you some of your own bias um, and show scriptures that sh point out like how a false prophet might be and then I have definitive statements, which is, okay, now this is what a false prophet is. How do you know if someone is a false prophet? One, they might do signs and wonders. Two, people might have a lot of good stuff to say about them. Three, they might be persuasive, likable, and charismatic you might like them. You might like what they have to say. Four, they don't produce good fruit. And five, they don't practice what they preach. Six, they make up stories. So, you know, their own stories versus God's word. Uh, seven, they have bad doctrine slash heretical doctrine. Eight, their prophecies don't always come to pass. And nine, they crave their own disciples. So now where am I getting these points from? I'm gonna dive in and if you weren't feeling up to a Bible study, <laughs> um, sorry, not sorry, we're getting into Bible study territory now because um, <clears throat> like I said, you can't just you can't go off your own intuition, your own gut. You have to go off the word of God with these things. Um, so the first point, they might do signs and wonders. A lot of people have mentioned in the comments, oh, well, he, he did these signs, you know, he performed these miracles. And whether or not he did those things, I don't see compelling evidence of that, but it doesn't matter, right? Because even if somebody performs quote unquote, signs and wonders, miracles, all that, it does not mean that they are vindicated. It does not mean that they've got God's stamp of approval on them and what they say. So to back me up on that first point, I have Matthew 24, 24, which says, for false Christs and false prophets will arise and perform great signs and wonders so as to lead astray, if possible, even the elect. They can be a false prophet and perform signs and wonders. Point two, people might have a lot of good to say about them. So this one is kind of an interesting one. And I bring it up because you might have people in your life who, who you admire and respect, 
who think highly of William Branham or another person, and you have to determine if this is if this is a true prophet of God or a false prophet. And we learn that just because somebody has a good reputation and people speak well of them does not mean that they are a prophet of God. And to back me up on this one, I have Luke 6, 26, which says, Woe to you when all people speak well of you, for so their fathers did to the false prophets. It's a good verse as a warning to ourselves. If everyone's speaking highly of you, you know, you need to be humble and look for that sin in your life and find people who are willing to call out that sin in your life, right? But it's also a warning that people speak this way of false prophets. Point three, they might be likable, charismatic, and uh, persuasive. So this is where we get more into like what your gut is telling you and how you feel about this person, whether you feel like they're trustworthy, etc. And normally I'm an advocate of like trust your gut, right? As a woman, if you know, you're walking alone at night, you know, you want to trust your gut. If something feels off, you want to be high alert. And generally, like in that fight or flight sense, like I'd agree with that, but I've also witnessed people that they really come across super likable, charismatic and sweet and like trustworthy to me, but they're actually not trustworthy and they break that trust. To back me up on this one, I've got Jeremiah 23, 16, which says, thus says the Lord of hosts, do not listen to the words of the prophets who prophesy to you, filling you with vain hopes. They speak visions of their own minds, not from the mouth of the Lord. Um, I think this one is really tempting for me because as I talked about in my last video, sometimes I wish that the Bible would say like, you know, because if you have this much suffering, then you're like maxed out and everything else, like you'll have sunshine and roses, like you'll have a good life, everything will be great. Um, filling me, I wish that there was like that type of hope uh, in this lifetime, not just knowing that it's going to be that in the next. And so I can see, I can personally see how very tempting it is um, to believe somebody who's filling you with those vain hopes. And, you know, saying that they're from the Lord and making you feel like you have this, you know, you have this false sense of hope for your future, whether that be for your finances, your family, your health, whatever that is. Um, the Bible doesn't promise you a good life here on earth. In fact, if you're a Christian, there, you will, you will have some persecution and hardship in your life. Um, in fact, we're, we're promised that. So, so this is just obviously false, um, but it's very tempting. And that's why I put it in this category of, um, saying that they're likable, persuasive, charismatic, because that is something that you want to hear, right? So now we have point four, which is they don't produce good fruit. I'm drawing this from Matthew 7, 15 to 20 which says, beware of false prophets who come to you in sheep's clothing, but inwardly are ravenous wolves. You will recognize them by their fruits. Are grapes gathered from thorn bushes or figs from thistles? So every healthy tree bears good fruit, but the diseased tree bears bad fruit. A healthy tree cannot bear bad fruit, nor can a diseased tree bear good fruit. Every tree that does not bear good fruit is cut down and thrown into the fire. Thus, you will recognize them by their fruits kind of along the same lines as four, but uh, I have point five is they don't practice what they preach, which I have here in Matthew 23, one to 29. Then Jesus said to the crowds and to his disciples, the scribes and the Pharisees sit on Moses' seat. So do and observe whatever they tell you but not the works they do. For they preach, but they don't practice. They tie up heavy burdens, hard to bear. They lay them on other people's shoulders, but they themselves are not willing to move them with their finger. They do all their deeds to be seen by others, for they make their phylacteries broad and their fringes long. And they love the place of honor at feasts and the best seats in the synagogues and greetings in the marketplace and being called rabbi by others. 
But you are not to be called rabbi, for you have one teacher, and you are all brothers. And call no man your father on earth, for you have one father who is in heaven. Neither be called instructors, for you have one instructor, the Christ. The greatest among you shall be your servant. Whoever exalts himself will be humbled, and whoever humbles himself will be exalted. Obviously, that's about the, the Pharisees. But I think it applies here, too, because I've definitely seen this pattern in false prophets where um, they will hold these high standards for other people. But for them, you know, the chosen one, it doesn't always uh, it doesn't always line up. Point six, they make up stories. Second Peter 1 16. For we do not follow cleverly devised myths when we made known to you the power and coming of our Lord Jesus Christ. But we are eyewitnesses of his majesty. For when he received honor and glory from the God of the Father, and the voice was borne to him by the majestic glory, this is my beloved Son, with whom I am well pleased. We ourselves heard his very voice born from heaven, for we were with him on the holy mountain. And we have the prophetic word more fully confirmed, to which you will do well to pay attention as to a lamp shining in a dark place until the day dawns and the morning star rises in your hearts. Knowing this, first of all, that no prophecy of scripture comes from someone's own interpretation, for no prophecy has ever produced was ever produced by the will of man, but men spoke from God as they were carried along by the Holy Spirit. Prophecies should always be coming from God. If they're true, they are going to be 100% scriptural, right? It's not going to, you know, the scripture, it's not going to contradict scripture. We've also got uh, Jeremiah 14, 14, which says, And the Lord said to me, The prophets are prophesying lies in my name. I did not send them, nor did I command them to speak. They are prophesying to you a lying vision, worthless divination, and the deceit of their own minds. So yeah, they make up stories. It's not going to be always like from the word of God. They will come up with their own prophecies. Point seven. They will have bad doctrine slash heretical doctrine. Okay, so I got Second Peter 2. But false prophets also arose among the people, just as there will be false teachers among you who will secretly bring in destructive heresies, even denying the master who bought them, bringing upon themselves swift destruction. And many will follow their sensuality, and because of them the way of truth will be blasphemed. And in their greed they will exploit you with false words. Their condemnation from long ago is not idle, and their destruction is not asleep. If they are teaching heretical doctrines, they are a false prophet, straight up. And then eight, their prophecies don't come to pass. And I've got this one from the Old Testament, which says, it's uh, Deuteronomy 18, 20 to 22. But the prophet who presumes to speak a word in my name that I have not commanded him to speak, or who speaks in the name of other gods, that same prophet shall die. And if you say in your heart, how may we know the word that the Lord has not spoken? Verse 22, when a prophet speaks in the name of the Lord, if the word does not come to pass or come true, that is a word that the Lord has not spoken. The prophet has spoken it presumptuously, and you need not be afraid of him. So there you have it. Don't fear um, a so-called prophet whose prophecies don't come to pass. And we have some uh, prophecies um, if we're talking about William Branham in particular, that have not come to pass. And the time is past for them to come to pass. And I have not seen one verifiable prophecy that he prophesied before it happened, and then it happened, and it can be proved that it happened, right? That he didn't just say happened. If there was a prophecy that came to pass, that wouldn't vindicate all his other prophecies and his all other ministry, right? A broken clock is right twice a day, right? If you spit fire so many prophecies, something might come to pass accurately, right? If you're saying something about the political climate that is being forecasted, you know, you're saying something about the, the climate that you think is going to happen based on like some uh, scientific predictions, you know, you're trying to hedge your bets on what is going to, you think is most likely going to happen and call it a prophecy. And um, that I think is pointless and also just 
again, if all your prophecies aren't coming to pass, you're a false prophet. End of story. Um, lastly, I've got nine, which is they crave their own disciples. Acts 20, 28 to 30 says, pay careful attention to yourselves and to all the flock in which the Holy Spirit has made you overseers to care for the church of God, which he obtained with his own blood. I know that after my departure, fierce wolves will come, come in among you, not sparing the flock. And from among your own selves will arise men speaking twisted things to draw away the disciples after them. We see Branham bragging about how many people came, supposedly came to, to this convention or that convention, to this sermon series. And it ultimately doesn't matter. We should be pointing back to Jesus as, the, as our God and as the standard of truth. And we should be humbling ourselves and say, don't look at me, look at God, right? Look at Jesus, look at his word. So with that, that's all I have for you today. Uh, nine points on how to spot a false prophet. Let me know in the comments if you think that I missed anything. Are there any verses that you've looked to? Do you think anything that I shared was inaccurate? My interpretation of the scripture inaccurate? I'd love to hear from you in the comments. I will be actually commenting down below with some scriptures, with the scriptures I used plus some other scriptures. So you can go in there, read the context, do your own deep dive to do your own research in the word of God. So you can prayerfully look through that because ultimately, right? Like, I don't want you to be taking my word for it. It's God's word that says it. And so um, read it for yourself and prayerfully consider it. If you're coming out of the message and you are having trouble giving an answer for why you left um, and how he's a false prophet. You're having a hard time articulating it. Um, don't be afraid to just pull out your Bible. <laughs> don't be afraid to just pull out your Bible because if you don't have the words to explain it, the Bible will be able to explain it for you. With that, thanks for watching and I'll see you next time.